G'day guys, welcome. Uh, I, I'm loving this, the, the trigonometry stuff we're starting to get into now. Um, I'm going to extend a little bit on the last video where we spoke about uh, the um, uh, uh, angles of, uh, of uh, any magnitude, or the angles larger than uh, 90 degrees and how we can find the, the, the trigonometric and the reciprocal trigonometric ratios. So sine, cos, tan, uh, sec, cosec, and, uh, and cotan, or oh, cot. Um, we're going to uh, uh, look at a little relationship that I hinted at. Now, uh, one of the, the comments uh, on YouTube from the last time about why one of the, the, um, the, the ratios was positive and the other negative was, was spot on the money. So let's go back and revisit some of, of what we saw, right? So, Whoops, wrong colour. Okay, so let's um, think about uh, the way we defined our ratios. So remember that uh, sine of theta Get just up again. X, Y, uh, right angle. It's a terrible, uh, terrible vertical line, but you know what I mean. Uh, sine of theta was uh, Y over R uh, over R. Sorry, you said the right thing. Wrote the wrong thing. Y over R. Cos of theta. Yeah, said the wrong thing and wrote the right thing there too. Sine of theta was Y over R. Cos of theta was X over R. Tan of theta was y over x. Okay, opposite over adjacent. So those come from just our normal definitions of sine, cos, and tan, looking at that right angle in there. Okay, so um, look at, uh, over here at this point here, or at, at, at anywhere in this first quadrant, remember the first quadrant? Anywhere in the first quadrant, x and y are going to be positive. Okay? When we move into the second quadrant, so when, when theta extends out to here, uh, well, in that second quadrant, y is positive and x is negative. Okay, y is positive, x is negative. And r is always positive. r is always just the length of the radius, right? So that always uh, uh, is a positive. r is always positive. In here, y is positive, x is negative. Well, if y is positive, then sine theta in this second quadrant is always going to be positive. Okay? If in this quadrant x is negative, well, if that's true, then cos theta is always going to be negative. Okay? And if y is positive and x is negative, positive over a negative, then tan theta is always going to be negative. So, while all of the all of the ratios are positive in the first quadrant, only the sine ratio is positive in the second quadrant. Let's extend that around down into the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, x is negative and y is negative. Well, if x is negative, uh, then cos is negative. If y is negative, then sine is negative. But if x and y are both negative, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So tan will be positive in uh, the third quadrant. And you can probably see a pattern that's starting up, right? So sine is positive here, tan is positive here. Let's have a guess, right? But let's actually see why. In the fourth quadrant, in the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. Well, if y is negative, sine is negative. If x is positive, cos is positive. And if uh, y is negative and x is positive, well, then tan is going to be a negative. So only co uh, cos is positive in this fourth quadrant. Now, we can remember this using the, um, the, the, the first letters, A, S, T, C. I grew up in Sydney. And my, almost all school kids, when I was growing up, uh, used to catch a train to and from school. 
Uh, it's, it's not something we experience uh, in the country so much or in regional areas. Uh, but every, just about every kid in Sydney grew up hearing uh, the next train on platform, whatever it is, will stop at so-and-so, such-and-such, and then all stations to central. So that expression, all stations to central, basically was just something you, you grew up with. You knew exactly what that meant. You'd heard it a couple of times every day because there'd be announcements from all the different platforms and trains were coming and going from. Just pausing, I'll be right back. Right, oh, sorry folks, just back after that. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, uh, a kid that grew up hearing that, that, that repeated over and over again, that all stations to central, so A-S-T-C, all stations to central, rang out in their head. You don't hear that, or you haven't heard that growing up in the country, so come up with your own way of remembering A-S-T-C. Um, I don't know, I can't think of anything, right? But I'm sure you can, you guys are creative, right? So, ASTC, you need to remember, in the first quadrant, all ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, the sine ratio is positive. In the third quadrant, the tan ratio is positive. The fourth quadrant, the, co the cos or the cosine ratio is positive. And of course, true with the reciprocals as well, right? So, sec, cot, and uh, cosec uh, are all positive here. If the sine ratio is positive, then the cosec ratio is positive here, and the other two aren't. If the tan ratio is positive, then the cot ratio is positive there, and the other two aren't. If cosine is positive here, then sec is positive, and the other two aren't. Okay? So, uh, ASTC, get it in there. Remember that one. Okay? Not on the reference sheet, but it's got to be in here, or in your version of in there. Right? Um, okay, so... Let's not just look at the signs, not just look at what's positive and what's negative, let's push it just a little tiny bit further. Look at this, if I was to, to if that angle there is theta, and I was to go uh, 180 minus theta, so I want to come back exactly the same angle there. Okay, so if that's theta there, uh, I want to say that this angle here is exactly the same as that angle there. In other words, however far I'm going into this first quadrant, remember that we started at zero. Okay, remember we started at zero, 90, 180, 270. If I go theta degrees, if I go an angle theta into that first quadrant, okay, then I'm going to be going from 180 degrees, I'm going to be going back the same amount into the second quadrant. Okay? So um, while this is the angle theta, I'm saying that this is theta here, but really the angle represented by this, uh, uh, by this point here. So if this is the angle represented by theta, the angle represented by this point over here is 180 minus theta. Okay, so if, to get, if I've got to, go, got to go through theta degrees to get up to there, then to get to this point here, I've got to go 180 minus theta. Okay, I'm not, I can't see your faces, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that makes some sort of sense to you. So if that's theta degrees there, then this angle here is theta degrees. So that's 180 minus theta. What I want you to come away with is the understanding that this angle here and this angle here are the same. Okay, why? Well, because if this is R, if that's R, uh, then this will be y. This will be exactly the same height there that this is here. And likewise, if this is x, well then this is going to be x under here as well. Or negative x, right? It's going to be minus x. But it's going to be the same length, is what I'm saying. That length there and that length there are the same. If this angle and this angle are the same, that length and that length have to be the same. And that height and that height have to be the same. Okay? So, Let's look at what we can say about uh, the sine of theta and the sine of 180 minus theta. What can we draw out about those two things? Well, uh, I'll leave that there so we can refer to it. Remember, sine of theta is y over r. y over r. Well, the sine of theta here is going to be y over r. So the sine of theta is equal to the sine 
of this angle here. This angle here is 180 minus theta. 180 minus theta. Sine of theta is the sine of 180 minus theta. Stop. Don't take my word for it. Whip out your calculator and check for a few values. Look at sine of 30 and sine of 150, which is 180 minus 30. Is it true? Look at the sine of 60 and the sine of 120, which is 180 minus 60. Just check it out for different values and verify that for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Okay? Pause the video for a sec, take out your calculator and have a play and see if that isn't in fact the case, right? So the sine of theta is the sine of 180 minus theta. Well, okay, the cos of theta here, the cos of theta is x over r, so x over r, okay, no problem. The cos of theta here, well, the cos of 180 minus theta is negative x over r. So the cos of theta is x over r, the cos of 180 minus theta is negative x over r. So cos of theta is the negative of cos 180 minus theta. Okay, I don't know if I'm actually going off the board there. No, I'm still on screen. Okay, very good. So cos of theta is, sine of theta is the sine of 180 minus theta. Cos of theta is negative cos 180 minus theta. Okay. Because cos, remember, is x over r. Well, my x is negative x, and my r is r. Okay. So the cos of 180 minus theta is negative x on r. Well, that's the negative of cos theta. So cos of theta is negative cos 180 minus theta. And look, that's true the other way around as well. So you can say that... Um, uh, we, we can say that for both rules. We can say the sine of 180 minus theta equals sine theta. And now we can say cos of 180 minus theta is negative cos theta. Okay? So, um, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll write these out in, in their various uh, uh, permutations when we get to the end. Let's keep on going. Let's extend it out. What's tan of theta? Well, tan of theta is y on x. Okay? Well, if tan of theta is y on x, then y over negative x, it's going to be a negative. So just like cos of theta was negative cos 180 minus theta, it's going to be the same for tan. Tan of theta is the negative of tan 180 minus theta. Okay, And verify that too, don't take my word for it. Uh, ask your calculator what cos of 30 is and ask it what the negative of cos of, of 150 is, which is 180 minus 30. Okay. Likewise with tan. Ask the calculator what, what's tan of 30, uh, and then what's the negative of tan 150. And see if they're not in fact equal to each other. Okay. So, okay, that's interesting. Does it extend out any further? It does. Well, now watch this. If I was to now go 30 degrees past 180, Okay, so I went from zero, around 30 degrees to get to here. Then I went from 180 back 30 degrees to get to there. Well, if I was to go to 180 plus 30 degrees, that's a terrible approximation of theta, excuse me. If I was to go to 180 plus theta, then I would end up down at this point here. This is 180 plus theta. Okay, that'll give me this triangle over here. Now, look, that's R, that's R, that's negative X. What's this going to be? That's going to be negative Y. And we can go through the same process again. Right? Now, um, I'll do it for the first one, and then I'm just going to tell you what the rest of them are. So, let me... Uh, give myself a little bit of working room here. Now, I'm not quite sure about how far on the board I've got room for on screen. Not very, okay. Right on. Um, well, look, pause the video for a moment, get those three results down. Uh, and we're just about to rub them off, and then I'm going to put up our results for the third quadrant uh, in the same spot, right? So, once you've got them down, you can hit play again.
Okay. So now let's look in this, this third quadrant here. Right? Well, what do we know? What's the, the sine of theta? Sine of theta, remember, is y over r. Well, my, my y down here is negative y. So the sine of 180 plus theta is going to be the negative of sine theta. So that's negative sine 180 plus theta. Okay. Likewise, cos is x over r. Well, my x is negative. So exactly the same thing is going to happen here. Cos of theta is the negative of cos 180 plus theta. And tan of theta, well tan of theta is y on x. Negative y over negative, negative x is a positive. So tan of theta is exactly the same as tan of 180 plus theta. Okay. Again, don't take my word for it. Verify what I've just said to you. Check out what, say, sine of uh, 210 is, which is sine of uh, uh, 180 plus 30. So, so uh, sine of 30, uh, check out the negative sine of 210. Uh, cos of 30, negative cos of 210. See if, that's not, see if they're not in fact equal. Tan of 30, uh, tan of 210, see if they're not in fact equal. 180 plus 30. Uh, and then we can extend it out again further. Guess what's going to happen down here? All right. So in this quadrant, sine of theta was the, the same as sine of 180 minus theta, because sine's always positive in here, and cos and tan were negatives. In this quadrant, uh, sine and cos were negative, and the tans were equal. What's going to happen, guys, in the fourth quadrant? Can you? I mean, I hope you can see, but I'm going to get sine of theta equals negative sine of whatever angle this is going to be. Uh, cos of theta is the positive of whatever the angle is going to be. And tan of theta is going to be the negative of. Well, what's the angle going to be in the fourth quadrant? Okay, so again, I want, to, I, want to, so I want to get into this fourth quadrant by the same angle, right, by the same amount. Well, if this was 0, that was 90, that was 180, that's 270, and this is back to 360 degrees, Okay. Then for me to get theta degrees down into this quadrant, well, I need to go, for me to, to, to go back and angle theta here, to go back by an angle of theta, I need to be going to 360 minus theta. So I need to go theta around 180, 270, 360, and then back by theta degrees, 360 minus theta. So that's going to be x, that there is going to be negative y. And then we set up our ratios again. I'm going to clean the board now and then come back with a, a summary of all of these different results for sine, cos and tan uh, 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 going uh, 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 around 180 degrees, so above and below 180 degrees and then uh, above and uh, below zero, obviously, that you know, they're just going to be the, the, the ratios. And then uh, below 360. So just hang tight, I'll clean the board and I'll come back with the summary written up for you and then you can get that summary down. Okay, be right back after this. Pause there. Alright guys, so here's basically a summary of all of those results. Uh, here are the positives, right? So uh, sine theta is positive and sine of 180 minus theta is positive. Tan theta is positive. Or, uh, uh, yeah, so tan theta is positive. Uh, for all of these, by the way, guys, I'm assuming that theta is an acute angle, right? So theta is between zero and ninety. So the sine of an angle between zero and ninety is equal to the sine of 180 minus an angle between zero and ninety. In other words, uh, an angle in the second quadrant, the sine of an angle in the second quadrant is equal to the sine of the angle in the first quadrant. Okay, uh, if theta is an acute angle, then 180 plus theta is in the third quadrant. Okay, so the tan of an angle in the third quadrant equals the tan of the angle in the first quadrant. Uh, 360 minus an acute angle is in the fourth quadrant. The cosine of an angle in the fourth quadrant equals the cosine of the same angle in the first quadrant. Okay, so that's a little sort of 
uh, where do you reckon are there? What about angles in the second quadrant? 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant. Okay. Well, sine is positive. We just saw that up there. Okay. That's a, this result here is the same result that's up there. Right. Uh, sine is the only thing that's positive in the second quadrant. Okay. Cos in the second quadrant is negative. Tan in the second quadrant is also negative. Okay. 180 plus theta is the third quadrant. Okay, so uh, we saw that in the third quadrant, 180 plus theta tan is positive. 180 plus theta tan is positive. The other two, sine in the third quadrant, cos in the third quadrant, are both negatives. Okay, likewise in the fourth quadrant, well, what did we see in the fourth quadrant? We saw that cos was positive. Okay, so cos in the fourth quadrant is positive, and sine and tan are negatives of each other. And you can verify these results. Okay. So, uh, is that it? Are we done? Well, almost. We're very, 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 very close. And I know that this has gone on, but there's just a lot of really sort of uh, densely packed information in this idea, right? Uh, we can, now that we know this relationship exists, uh, and if you, if you paid really close attention to one of the, uh, the, the, the questions in the last exercise, uh, in exercise 5D, it actually gave a graph of two of the functions, okay? We can actually graph the, uh, all of the trig ratios, sine, cos, tan, cosec, sec, and cot. We can graph all of those functions, right? So I'm not gonna do them on the board because it's gonna be appallingly untidy. Just before the start of exercise 5E, and extension people, I'm assuming it's gonna be the same in your textbook before 6E, there's a page where all of the graphs between zero and uh, between a negative and positive 360 degrees of each of the six trig ratios, so the three trig ratios and the three reciprocal ratios, are drawn. Um, you know, uh, does this go without saying? I, I think it does. If you had a math aid, drawing these would be a piece of cake. Just saying, right? Um, but anyway, the, the graphs are there for you to draw. Please copy them down neatly. Keep those graphs as a ready reckoner for you. Trust me, you're going to need that uh, uh, moving forward, right? Now, guys, uh, that opens us up to exercise 5E or exercise 6E. I'm not going to put the graphs on the board. Go to the, 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 that page in the textbook. They're a lot neater there than I'm going to be able to put them up on the board uh, with my, um, you know, artistic, quote-unquote, uh, skills, quote-unquote, okay? Uh, I didn't mean to say quote, unquote. There's no such thing as unquote. Quote, end quote. Right, um, right so looking at exercise 5E, let me pick out a couple of parts from, from some of the early questions and see how we, we actually answer those things. Right. So uh, question 1A, uh, uh, question 1 says, determine, tell us whether we're positive or negative. They're not asking for an answer. They're just saying, is this positive or is this negative? They say, for example, cos of 280. Well, where would cos of 280 be? Let's think about that. A, S, T, C, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, cos of 280, well 280 is going to be in here, okay, in the fourth quadrant. The cos is going to be positive. It's that easy. Right? What's another one? Uh, tan of 290. Well, 290 is in here as well. The tan of 290, no, only cos is positive in this quadrant. Tan of 290 is going to be negative. Cos of 100, well 100 degrees is in here, sort of just after 90. Cos, no, only sine is positive here. Cos is negative. So straight up with question one, I can just go through and look and say, well, what quadrant does it lie in? If it lies in, so let's say I ask you, what about the sine of 150? Well, 150 is in this quadrant. Sine is positive. Sine of 150 is going to be positive. Okay? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Uh,
Okay. Now, one of the things that the, um, uh, the exercise talks about, I'm looking at question, um, uh, question four talks about boundary angles. Well, the boundary angles are these, so the 90, the 180, the 270, the zero and the 360. They're called our boundary angles, right? Um, don't confuse yourself at this point with worrying about what those terms mean or why they matter. Uh, for now, just go to the, the, the trig graphs that you saw on, you know, just before exercise 5E or just before exercise 6E. So go to those graphs and have a look and see is this the function indeed defined for that value? Okay, uh, and then just trust the graph for now. We'll get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of, of, of boundary angles and why they matter look further on. Leave that for now, don't worry about it, don't let it bog you down. Okay, uh, so it says use the trig graphs uh, to find the values if they exist of the trig ratios of boundary angles. So the sine of 90, We'll go to your trig graph and have a look. What is the sine of 90? Okay, just read it straight off the graph. Okay, it's going to be that's going to be one. Okay, but don't take my word for it. Go and have a look at a look at it on the graph. Uh, if you are a particularly keen little bean and you want to know why uh, it's one, again, think about uh, how we define. So the sine of theta is. Uh, y over r. Uh, think about how we define uh, that. So if theta was 90 degrees, in other words, if r went straight up to here, okay, well then my y value, my y value, my height, my y value will be the same as my r value. Y and r will be equal. Okay, so y over r is is. Uh, you know, two equal amounts divided by one another, the answer is going to be one. And so on and so forth. That'll continue around, okay? But again, don't let it weigh you down. Don't, you know, th that's just for the real keen beans who want to know why these things are the case. You guys can do, uh, extend on what I've said there. Otherwise, please don't let it become a big sort of, oh, I've got to understand this point, like, you know, uh, in, in like sort of uh, a perfect depth right now. You don't, don't let it stress you. Uh, question five talks about exact values. Now we spoke about exact values last time. Right? Um, let me uh, quickly put up a recap. Remember uh, the, the, the set squares that you got when you were a kid in year seven, 60, 30, 45, these, are, these triangles are on the math aid. Don't need to memorize them. They even give you the lengths. All you need to remember is that that's 60 and that's 30, and that that's 45, okay? So they tell you that that's one, that's two, that's root three, and that that's one, that's one, and that's root two, okay? Um, now, I can tell you exactly what the sine of 30 is. Not a decimal approximation, I can tell you exactly what it is. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse at the half. I can tell you what uh, uh, the cos of 30 is, adjacent over hypotenuse, is root 3 on 2. Exactly root 3 on 2. Okay. So if I was to ask you um, what is uh, cos of 135? Cos of 135 degrees. Well, uh, that's like saying cos of... 180 minus 45. Is it not? 135 is 180 minus 45. Well, cos of 180, that's cos in the second quadrant. Well, that's going to be negative. Cos in the second quadrant is negative. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. So that's negative cos 45. Well, cos of 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's negative 1 on root 2. Okay, that's all I need to do. So your job will be, for those uh, angles outside of the first quadrant, your job is going to be, when they ask for an exact value, it's going to be to say, well, is how much above or below 180 is this? How much uh, below 360 is this? 
What quadrant is it in? Is it positive or negative? Okay. Uh, I'll do one more of those. So let's say um, we looked at uh, sine of 300. So what's the sine of 300 degrees? Well, 300 is 360 minus 60. So that's the sine of 360 minus 60. Well, that's in the, the fourth quadrant. Well, in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative, because only cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So that's negative sine 60. Well, sine of 60, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 on 2. So it's negative root 3 on 2. Okay. So that's uh, question 5. Uh, question 6 is, is basically more of the, the exact same stuff. Question 7 gets us to work with the reciprocal ratios. What's cot of 120? Cot of 120. Let's have a look at that. Uh, cot of 120 degrees. Well, what's cot? Cot is 1 over tan. So that's 1 over tan of 120. Well, what's 120? Well, that's 180 minus 60. So 1 over tan of 180 minus 60. Well, that's in the second uh, quadrant. Tan's negative in the second quadrant. That's 1 over negative tan 60. Tan is opposite over adjacent. That's root 3. So that is uh, 1 over negative root 3. And you can rationalise the denominator and, and, and so forth from there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave it there so that you guys can get in there and have a bit of a play and then let the exercise extend you. Uh, any problems, any questions at all, feel free to shoot me uh, uh, questions, email, teams, uh, carrier pigeon, whatever. Ask questions, work hard. Good on you guys. I appreciate your efforts. I really do.